there are two separate trillion dollar industries that will squeeze the life out of you if you aren't careful. And today you're going to learn what you can do to protect yourself and protect your family. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, Daily Huddle. Good morning to each and every one of you that has made the decision and the commitment to join us. I am so happy that you are here. Uh, and I intend to give you information that will change your life. My name is Vince Roundtree, and my co host, Rollin Venata is not with us this morning, so I've got to take the show on my own. I hope that I can deliver for you. I will do my best. But before we get started, we have a couple of questions for you. And the first question, as always, is, uh, Sorrell, how are you, my friend? I am the way I say I am. I am refreshed. And I am the source of joy in the world. You know, you, you, you always give me something to chew on, something to live by. You are as you say you are. And I love it. Uh, it is also important to understand the time is now. It's the only time that you can influence. It's the only time that you live in. We spend so much of our lives worried about the past. You can't change it. It is what it is. And we spend so much of our time worried about the future. It's not here yet. But the only time that you can impact is the here and now. Are the way you say you are. The time is now and you and I and we all are here exactly where we all need to be. Good morning, Stan the Man. Good morning, Vince. Good morning. Good morning, Daily Huddle family. Always a pleasure to see you, man. Always Mine. a Mine. pleasure to see you. Mine. <laughs> so today is a uh, today's topic is one that is so important to me because I think that everyone needs to be aware of the powers of the two independent trillion dollar industries that we get caught in between and we get chewed up and we are nothing. A trillion dollars is like a ridiculous amount of money. Like nobody can really wrap their arms around the number trillion. Like a million dollars sounds like, I mean, that's, like a lot, but a million, a million times, a million times a million is a trillion. How much money is that? Well, it's important that you understand that in the United States, the food industry is a trillion dollar industry. And we know that Large industries have lobbyists down in Washington, D.C. that shapes our laws. Our Congress is shaped by lobbyists and big money. Well, 
it's hard to get bigger than a trillion dollar industry. And the food industry is absolutely a trillion dollar industry. And they have one objective in mind, and that is to earn a return for their shareholders. Make a profit. Make a profit. You are a part of that because you are a consumer. So how can they make as much money as possible? Well, food is something that you need. You need it more than once, you need it every day. So the food companies, their objective, their objective is to make as much money as they can. So they do that by making foods that you and I can't resist. They hire the world's best scientists to capture and create flavors and aromas that they then can test on thousands of people that lights up your brain. They can create foods that literally light up your brain in a similar manner that sex does. And we can't resist it. The problem is the foods that they create that we can't resist do not make us healthy. In fact, just the opposite. Over the long term, it makes us sick. And there's no one that is out to protect you in that world. So if the, this trillion dollar industry is growing bigger and making more money by creating foods that we can't exist, that get us hooked. But over the long road, it makes us sick. Well, what do we do when we go sick, when we get sick? We go to the doctor. And you've just entered into the second trillion dollar industry. Now, the healthcare industry is a three and a half trillion dollar industry. Their objective is to earn a profit for their shareholders. And they don't recognize that the cause for most of the things that they treat, the cause is this other trillion dollar industry. That's the cause. And so if you get high blood pressure, and by the way, most people do in this country, if you are, if you get something like heart disease or like diabetes or God forbid cancer uh, or stroke, many of those actually, believe it or not, 80%, 80% of the illnesses that our healthcare system treats is caused by your lifestyle. The food we eat is a major cause, but when I say lifestyle, I'm also including the way you eat, lack of movement or the way you move, your sleep, caring for your mental health, and the substances that you allow in your body that can do you harm, like smoking, like drugs, like abusing alcohol. These things, 80% of all healthcare spending are things that you can control but you're trapped between these two industries because the healthcare industry doesn't have protocols that teach you that the cause is these lifestyle things. Now we can get into why or why 
that is. Uh, I think the fact that it's a multi-trillion dollar industry is one of those reasons. And if and, and, and what better business model is there than take this pill every day for the rest of your life or you're going to get sick and die? Huh, how is that for a business model? Cholesterol medication is a $35 billion industry. You think they want that to end? Of course they don't. But if you went plant-based, that industry would be gone. High blood pressure meds, multi-billion dollar industry. If you were to eat plant-based foods, exercise, get good sleep, control your stress, that industry would be gone. Heart disease would be gone. Stroke would be gone. Many cancers would be gone. You see, as a nation, we are literally trapped between two independent trillion dollar industries. And they only care about their profits. But you have power that you didn't know that you had. You have power over your lifestyle. The only person that controls what you eat is you. I mean, assuming that you're not in, incarcerated, right? I mean, if you've got your freedom, you choose what you eat. To a large extent, you control what your children eat. You are the only one that makes the decision if you're going to exercise or not. You have the power to control the environment around your sleep and your stress. And these are the things that cause 80% of our healthcare spend. Think about that. 80% of our healthcare spend would be gone if you eat more plants, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, beans, lentils, split peas, chickpeas, drink plenty of water. That right there would knock out a lot of things. Add to that moving every day. Add to that your sleep. Add to that your stress. And you have got that healthcare thing, 80% of it is gone. And we all have to take agency in that. We all have to control that, but most of us don't because we're running and ripping and we got bills to pay and we got mouths to feed and we got rent or mortgages to pay and we're worried about the next dollar and we're worried about things and we neglect our lifestyle, but you can't. We neglect our lifestyle until something goes wrong. Until we're in the doctor's office or in a hospital, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. I got to tell you a story about <coughs> a woman that went through our last five-day red line challenge. I gave a talk about reversing diabetes a week before my challenge. I gave that talk on Wednesday, and there was a woman that hurt it. Then on Thursday, I gave a blood pressure talk. Then on Friday, I gave a joint health talk. She went to all of them. And she said that she had been just fed up with all of her medication. I did not tell her to do this, but she made the decision 
just stop taking all of her meds and go plant-based immediately. So on that on the Friday, now my red line challenge started the Monday after this. On Friday, she stopped taking her meds. She went 100% plant-based, ate below the red line, ate fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. Her fasting glucose, while she was on medication, which normal is below 100, between 100 and 125 is pre-diabetes, over 125 if you're fasting, is full diabetes. She was on medication and her blood glucose was 170 or higher. Fasting on medication. And, that, and that's the condition she was in when she stopped taking her meds and went plant-based. The next Monday, she went plant-based on Friday. So between Friday, Saturday, Sunday, by Monday, by Monday, without taking pills, her fasting glucose was 90. 90. It was normal without medication. And this is after four years of taking pills and having fasting glucose that was still in the diabetes range. Four days, her blood glucose was normal without pills. And she said she felt incredible. Lost weight, blood pressure got in the normal range, fasting glucose in the normal range with food. That's the power of food. Now, listen, let me be clear. Number one, I don't tell anybody to take meds or not take meds. I'm not a doctor and I don't have the license to tell you to take medication or not. I'm not saying that. Number two, I am not saying that if you have diabetes, you are going to respond that quickly. I don't know how quickly your body will respond. It may respond in days like it did with this woman from our last challenge. It may take weeks, it may take months. But type two diabetes is caused by the trillion dollar food industry that we're hooked on. And by the multi-billion dollar meat industry that they have lobbies to make sure that even though they produce foods that should have a cancer warning label on it, that that label is not there. You see, processed meats are considered by the IARC, the International Agency for Research on Cancer. They are the ones that determine whether something is carcinogenic or not. We know that smoking is a class one carcinogen, no question. Radiation is a class one carcinogen. As determined by the IARC, there's enough science where they can say smoking causes cancer. Radiation causes cancer. Processed meats are in the same category. If you are making lunch for your children and you use and you give them cold cuts, sliced turkey, sliced ham and cheese sandwiches you make for your kids, you probably don't know. You are feeding your children a class one carcinogen. We know it causes colorectal cancer. We know it. And if it weren't for the multi-billion dollar meat industry, there should be a warning label on bacon, on ham, on chicken nuggets, on turkey, sliced, uh, uh, any meat that is processed, processed meats. Yes, we all love bacon. You need to know that it causes colorectal cancer. We know the actor Chadwick Bosman died of colorectal cancer at like, what, 40, 38, 40, something like that. Way too early to be dying. 
colorectal cancer rates are going through the roof. And we know that the more uh, meat that we consume and specifically processed meats, that's the cause. But because of the big money lobbyists, you and I and most people don't know. We don't know. And we're harmed as a result. Sorrell, you got a question, my friend. You're, you're on mute. Yeah, Vince, just for clarification, a number one carcinogen like cigarette has nicotine in it, right? Mm -hmm. And and all the chemicals that those are all the agents that combine to make it a carcinogen. Mm -hmm. There is beef that you get from a restaurant versus processed sliced corned beef or whatever. What's the difference between beef from a restaurant and the processed meat that makes the processed meat a number one carcinogen while the meat itself isn't? Mm -hmm. It's the it's the it's the chemical processing that it goes through. Uh, red meat, beef, or red meat is a uh, the IARC has put that as a class two A, means that it probably causes cancer, but they don't have enough data yet mm -hmm. to put it in class one, which class one carcinogens definitely cause cancer. Class two A. The definition of 2A is it probably causes cancer. And all red meat, uh, beef and lamb and veal, those uh, red meats are, uh, they, they probably cause cancer, but it is, the, it is the chemical processing and the nitrates that are added. Uh, you know, when you see, uh, we all love honey baked ham, right? And, and ham, Sandwiches, ham, right? Ham. I mean, we all grew up Thanksgiving. <laughs> delicious, right? It's delicious. You know, if you take pork, I mean, you have pork chops before, right? I mean, you know, when, when you look, when you cook pork, it's white. Why is ham pink? It's in the processing. It's in the processing that makes it pink. It's not normally pink. It has to be processed to get that color. Yeah. And it is during the it was during the chemical processing that it goes from class two A, uh, probable class one to to, to class one uh, or group one, which is definitely causes cancer. Yeah. Uh, one last question. I'm curious. Given the, it seems as if those two industries you're pointing to, it's not random that one feeds the other. Mm -hmm. Is it by design or did it just happen that we eat a lot of crap so that we can feed the medical industry? Yeah. By design or just kind of, yeah, it just happened. That is a matter of opinion. And I think it's a little of both. I think for the most part, it's random. But we know that there are people that sit, you know, high level executives that sit on the board of directors for food companies that also sit on the board of directors in the pharmaceutical company. That is a fact. That is a fact. Are they colluding? I don't know. Yeah. I don't think they have to. I just don't, I just think they're not motivated to fix it. Yeah. I don't think they have to collude because the food industry by itself is going to create products that we can't resist. And they do that by including chemicals and creations 
uh, that nature doesn't do. You know, um, a ripe mango or a watermelon or a pineapple or a honeydew melon is so sweet. I mean, it's like, oh my God, these, if they're just so sweet. But that's not the same sweetness as your favorite cake. Mm. You got to alter it to, to get something like that. Nature does not provide high fat and salt or high fat and sweet in anything, but man can. And you can't resist it. And they know it. And they play on your anatomy and your biology with that because you can't resist that. You are naturally hardwired to go for sweets, you just are. And you're naturally hardwired to go for calorie dense foods because for most of our existence on this planet, food has been scarce. So when you see a calorie dense food, you, you, gravitate, to, you, you gravitate towards it. The food companies know that. Mm. Now, in addition to knowing that, do the food companies and the medical uh, industry also know that things like processed meat in the group one you know, I'm, I'm trying to get beyond thinking that there are people in those industries who are deliberately killing us. Are they deliberately killing us or no, you just don't no, know? Nobody wants you dead. There's no money in death. <laughs> no, they don't want you dead. And they don't want you perfectly healthy. But when you're in between, you are <laughs> worth a trillion dollars. They want you on those meds every day. Nobody wants you dead. There's no money in that. No. They want you on that recurring revenue stream of taking that medication, getting those surgical procedures, going back to those doctor's visits, but don't educate you on the cause because then you're gone. Now you're healthy. There's no money in that. There's no money in you being healthy. The money is in you being in between, not healthy, not dead, but somewhere in between, that's where all the money is. Um, and yeah, there are certainly people on the board of directors for both healthcare companies and big food industry. That certainly is the case. Um, but I, I, I just think that both industries are doing everything they can to make every dollar possible. And it does not benefit the healthcare industry to tell you the cause is the food. That doesn't benefit them. Mm. Thank you, Vince. Got it. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, thanks for the question. Stan, you got anything? Yeah, I just want to say that, you know, if you look at the, the people who comprise those industries too, the, even the doctors and everything that own those, they eat the same way. <laughs> you, you, you are... Yeah, they are as much a victim of their own stuff they're doing as you are. They eat the same way and do the same. So they're not deliberately out to kill themselves either. But guess what? They have found out they can live with doing the stuff that keeps them unhealthy and they can keep on doing it. And they can make and it, 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 just the sad American way of doing things. That is so, so true. And they feed it to their children. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they make ham sandwiches for their children's That's lunches. Right. Just like That's right. And and, and 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 as a matter of fact, uh, I went to a healthcare, uh, a uh, plant-based nutrition conference, and there's a doctor that says the number one. And in this, I, I got a, a presentation from Dr. Kim Williams, who is the past president of the uh, American College of Cardiology, and he said the number one cause of death amongst heart doctors is heart disease. It's exactly what you said, Stan. It's exactly what you said. They, they, they're not sinister, man. They're not sinister. They're caught up in the same game. That's exactly right. That's exactly yeah. Somebody said right. we've gotten too good at learning how to press our own buttons, meaning how to create stuff to make us do stuff <laughs> that even the creators of it mm. are, are victims of it also. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. They are caught, even the doctors and, and all of the people in that healthcare industry, they too are grossly affected 
by that trillion dollar food industry. And it sucks you in, you can't avoid it because you gotta eat. But who teaches you the healthiest way to eat? And how do you do it when the majority of food around you is unhealthy? And it's so good that you can't resist it. So Vincent Temple, why do intelligent people keep on doing the stuff that we know is not good? Because we're addicted. That's right. That's right. That's right. That is exactly right. We don't do what we need to do because we're addicted because of the pleasure that that food gives us. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's the sad truth. But you do have control. You don't have to be a victim of the two independent trillion dollar industries because you control what you eat. You control your sleep environment. You decide whether or not you wanna exercise. And there are things that you can do to reduce your stress. That's your weapon against those two industries. That's your weapon. And you can win. On that note, I'll go ahead and wrap up uh, and, and, and say, uh, Stan, thank you for that contribution. You are just so right. It's always a pleasure to see you, man. Uh, and I'm gonna end with this. You only have one body in this lifetime. You've just got one. When you look in the mirror, that's all you got. If you hurt it, if you damage it, if you destroy it, where are you gonna live? You only have one body in this lifetime, so eat as though your life depends on it. Because it does. My name is Vince Roundtree. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on The Daily Huddle. And tune in to The Daily Huddle each and every morning at 9 o'clock. And I promise you, you will get some information that can change and impact your life. Thank you for watching this morning. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Sorrell. Thank you, Neil, for the platform. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate you, man.